Do you understand the differences between IT and IoT? Oh yes, IT is missing the O. You're hired. Given the indicative growth of IoT networks and thus an increased amount of generated data, 5G infrastructure will further scale IoT economies via increased connection of devices and machines. Therefore, it is important to understand the transformation of how organizations and networks might change from traditional IT landscapes. In this video, I will explain briefly what the major differences are in the IT and the IoT ecosystems. Let's get started. Starting on the IT side, the typical setup of IT in an organization is characterized by one or multiple core platforms, which can be connected to various internal or external systems. Via an application and connection layer, third parties or external vendors can provide products and services to the organization. Generally, the network organization is influenced by interest controlling stakeholders and consumers which represent the end users within the organization of the technology and system being applied. Also, there are producers, so-called technology suppliers. As mentioned earlier, solutions can be provided either as a product and or service. The real value, however, of the organization and the core platform rises as more and more systems and solutions are added to extend the original core platform and data warehouse. Usually, the more systems, the higher the increase in positive network effects and value generated for the stakeholder and end user groups. Nowadays, it has become quite normal to use various cloud or decentralized SaaS software as a service as services, as well as co-located data centers. The possibilities for running and operating business suites seem endless. However, traditional IT landscape is a more controlled and stable system environment, which builds upon the core platform and organization and can add value by adding various application layers. Therefore, given control mechanisms and via security measures, IT setup and organizations can be quite safe when it comes to access and protection of rights and external influence. The IT ecosystem is usually closed or when open has controllable insourcing layers with security measures such as system access rights and restrictions, firewalls and further lines of defense built around the system and organization. Are you still with me guys? Good, you can do it. The IoT Internet of Things ecosystem on the other hand is characterized by a variety of different points and features. First, it's all about device objects and network participants data collecting devices and machines which can share data and or communicate with each other, meaning the exchange and transfer of data. The network is based on physical objects, actors and sensors, linked or wired together into a group which is connected to the internet. The basis is an IoT platform for all the data flows. Depending on the platform solutions and tools available, organizations can now link into this network to see if their requirements can be satisfied. For example, look at your smart home, including internet connecting security sensors, your coffee or wash machine, smart TV and many, many other gadgets, all collecting a tremendous amount of data all the time. Or look at air sensors, measuring the quality or pollution of air in the cities, making transparent at what time air could be cleaner, more dirty, etc. So IoT platforms differ significantly in size and purpose. Many IoT platforms are intentionally designed to bring in a variety of participants and devices in order to source, slice, modelize and visualizing data. Once the data is contextualized, IoT platforms and or third parties can offer very useful web, mobile, augmented and virtual reality applications. Overall, these platforms tend to be very flexible in terms of data analysis and tools they offer. Walkabout is one example whose CEO I have come across meeting in Hamburg, Germany at a small conference a couple years ago. Their vision and ambition is to visualize and monitor any sort of data helping your individual needs deriving from their IoT platform. The platform does not need to own the devices, but value is created by data flowing from the various devices networks into the IoT platform for further insights. This is one important difference to IT systems. You do not need ownership of the network devices and can either be a provider or consumer of data, products and services, where value is added by connected large data analytics into your organization. Application layers can be built internal or external as with traditional IT setup, however. Wow, that was a lot of information to take in. 
One interesting fact I recall is Walkabout's ambition to own a living and making a living by selling your everyday's collected data to businesses. Very, very interesting stuff. Just think about it. Can you imagine making a living by sharing all your daily data? I mean everything from how many times did you brush your teeth to usage of toilet to when you are going to sleep, the quality of your sleep, how many times did you wake up during the night and so on and so forth. Will it really be possible to make a living? I mean really making money, catching by selling this data to third parties and companies? We will see. But it's quite exciting to think about, isn't it? Are you still with me? We are almost there. In general, IoT tools and platform analysis can externally brought into a company's IT landscape. But the IoT platform is the core of the new economy with dynamic web or other solutions built around it offering flexibility and focusing on data. Data is a new oil here. So according to the book China, the United States and Next Generation Connectivity, IoT platforms differ from traditional IT systems and landscapes in their, first of all, large numbers of devices with more and more being connected to the internet. Cisco predicted 50 billion devices being connected to the internet by 2020. Second, high variability of devices and their underlying hardware and software. Depending on the tests, the devices are aiming on delivering, e.g. measuring blood and heart rates, sensing air quality, measuring energy usage and waste, monitoring air spaces or dogs in a park, etc. 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 Hardware and software components of each of them can differ significantly. For example, the business logic, memory software, firmware, hardware driver, encryption, wireless protocols and many many others can differ significantly. This makes it very hard and challenging to categorize and manage devices. Imagine, it, imagine for example a Chinese sensor developed by a corporation compared to, a, to an energy device from Spain developed by a single person. Again comparing that against a multinational corporation from USA with same hardware but completely different software specifications. Depending on how international laws, guidelines and government involvement differs, security issues related to cyber securities are very challenging to overcome. Cyber security issues can be very complex arising from these differences. This brings me to the next difference, lack of language in the context of conceptual frameworks and guidelines. Without a common language, it will prove very challenging to establish security and network standards and thus vendor contract performance standards and many many more. Looking at organizations themselves, coordination and involvement challenge for spanning many organizations will be hard. Using IoT systems or platforms can involve many stakeholders and respective needs such as environmental system control. Responsibilities might be different, overarching visibility might not exist with less ownership and accountability creating organizational system risk and challenges. Something totally normal in organizations, if one group is thinking the other one is doing it, vice versa, everybody's thinking it is done, but effectively nobody's taking care of that. That is also another challenge and big problem to look at when looking at IoT platforms, network endpoints. Computing and network endpoints are built into the physical infrastructure embedded into our environment by the hundreds or thousands. This might not be so evident because we don't see them. That is also another huge difference to IT landscape and the ecosystem. With IoT platforms and devices, we have physical devices everywhere. We just might not be able to see them because they are small and hidden and separated in some other gadgets. When talking IT on the other hand, we mainly do not have these physical gadgets or devices. Lastly, lack of precedence for implementation. Creating and throwing IoT technology systems not into traditional IT and development lifecycle is unfamiliar territory for organizations. Analysis, implementation, validation and management is to be based on best efforts and management practices. Embedding a numerous amount of decentralized devices into a platform available for many organizations, partners and vendors requires necessary skills to consider all organizational management factors such as risk, added value, costs, adaption and many more. Are you for real, pal? Summary. The IT ecosystem is characterized by one organization or one network of organizations driving the delivery of IT products and services. IoT platform ecosystem, on the other hand, can be part of an organization's services and product offering 
but it is vastly characterized by the vast size and devices and data flows connecting to its core platform. Businesses must therefore ask themselves how to build attractive and safe models within their own data e ecosystem. This core platform can be an extension of the traditional IT landscape and lifecycle, but for IT it is not the core platform. As outlined before, there are many, many differences. In accordance with the book China, the United States and Next, Gen Next Generation Connectivity, I have outlined six main differences. Moving from traditional information management systems to IoT systems will require new approaches to achieving organizational and individual added value, while at the same time taking into account risks, costs and device management challenges. Ta-da! I hope you can take and learn a lot of from this video. I hope you liked my video. Please let me know what you think. For now, I gotta run and see how I can generate more data that I can sell effectively to companies. So t stay tuned and thanks for watching and yeah, I gotta run and see you bye.